Peace and blessings, everyone. Today I'm going to discuss the book, The Law of Attraction. I don't know the name of the authors offhand, and I don't have a book with me. Um, and the subtitle is the uh, the teachings. of Abraham, some to that extent. Um, and the reason I even pick, picked the book up is because of Abraham. And I thought it was referring to Abraham from the Bible, but it turns out that Abraham is actually the name of a, uh, I guess a, a, a spirit guide um, or that type of thing that this lady who co-wrote the book um, communicates with or the, 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 the guy communicates through her and talks to people so anyway uh, for those who are familiar with the concept of law of attraction or maybe not it's it's in the same vein as uh, the secret and things of that nature basically it's all about us having to power ourselves to create our reality um, and whatnot so you know, law of attraction. You know, it's saying that we have full and total control over everything that happens to us in our life. Every single thing, good and bad. Every single thing. So, if you want to be rich, then you can be that. You just have to want it. Right. Um, whatever you want whatever that desires you can be that now where the bad comes in is that <clears throat> see when we have a thought when we think something it, it starts things in motion it starts things to happen to to create to make that happen in our life all right good or bad if we have if we think about something then it, it's it's in motion. It's working to come to us, all right? Now you say, well, I would never think anything bad about myself or bad. I never think of anything bad wanting to happen to me. But the thing is, just the very thought of not wanting it to happen to you puts it in motion, all right? If you say, I don't want to, I don't want to be robbed. I'm scared of being robbed. Hope I'm never robbed. Well, you put it in motion that you're going to be robbed one day all right so i'm saying the key is not to even think about negatives whatsoever you know put out your mind don't think about not wanting to be it focus on what you do want and just put your full, full and total focus on that all right 100 percent and then it speaks about having feeling emotions when you have those thoughts all right so it's like truly believing that you want something, you're gonna get it, and having that emotion come up that you know is gonna happen, that you feel it deep inside is gonna happen, and that gives it more power. Uh, now, it, it, it's, it's very interesting, and you know, it, I guess it, it could be true. You know, for me, it's always the truth of everything. Um, of course, there are those who uh, who who live by such a creed. You know, they'll say, "Hey, it works because I did it, and I have what I have. I have my riches because I believe I created my world. The law of attraction works, All right?" And I know there might be some who say it doesn't. You know that it didn't work. But of course, then you can always say, well, they had a, because they had those negative thoughts, they had those doubts within their self. And so it didn't work because they didn't tru truly and fully believe. Um, you know, so I guess you never really know. Um, but one thing, you know, that I, I could take for it, one thing that I could, I could believe in, it, if you will, is that what it does, for me at least, it it goes along with and subscri subscribes to 
my religion of unequal belief or supreme belief. All right? Remember, I say that if you're going to believe, if you're going to have, if you're going to believe in something, have faith. And for me, having faith is meaning action, putting action to something. If you're going to believe, then how great can you believe? So with the law of attraction, you know, that to me is sort of a, uh, a, a, a supreme belief. You know, it's saying that yes, we have full and total control and power, right? So if you believe it, if you truly believe it, if you believe in everybody being happy, then it's going to happen. If you believe in the end of pain and suffering, then it's going to happen. And so, like I said, in our way, I can, I can, I can believe in it because of wanting to adopt a supreme belief. Now, it, like I said, it says so for those people who are, who are suffering, who are in pain, it's because they brought it upon themselves, and, and it says also that someone else else's life cannot impose on our on our life right so somebody somebody's suffering and pain and badness can't impose on ours they don't they don't connect all right only if we bring it in ourselves and that we can't do anything about their life right? we can think like maybe hope that they will be happy, um, and then of course I guess as always we can we can give them a word of confidence or come to them and let them know the power of the law of attraction, and so hopefully they'll believe in it and change their life. But other than that, we have no control over their life, their world. They have no control over ours, and they won't connect if we don't want to connect. You know? So a guy who wants to be a, a, a thief, a robber, that makes him happy. You know, if we don't want to be robbed, or if we don't think of it, once again, if we don't think about it, then he never robbed us. Okay. Um, but you know, the the one little problem I do have is is accepting the pain and suffering that other others are in, right? Because that's what it's saying. You know, you have to ex accept that. And, and another aspect of it is uh, Abraham, which is God, says that we choose to come into this world, right? It's not just that we're born, it's that we have an exi existence before being born, born into this physical realm. And we choose to come into this world to have life experiences and whatnot. You know, so you shouldn't get upset. Um, upset, depressed, uh, sad about the, the turmoil that other people are going through because they want to go through it. All right? I said I have a problem with that because there's so much pain and suffering and you know and so they're just saying just sit back and let it happen. Well in, a, in one way I can sort of see it because sometimes I, I, I wonder and I question and I and, you know I ask myself well <clears throat> If people really didn't want to be in this pain and suffering, then they wouldn't be in it, right? This world wouldn't be in the condition that it's in if everybody really didn't want it to be this way. But obviously, we want it or we accept it because it is this way. You know, we we accept the crime, we accept the hate, we accept the famine, the the poverty. We accept it because it's here. And we accept it because we aren't doing the things to uh, alleviate it, to get rid of it. You know, we don't we don't want to seem to adopt that supreme belief to get rid of it. You know, so people are always tell me that I'm not realistic when I say I believe in heaven on earth. When I believe that everyone can be happy, that everyone can have those things that they need, that everyone should have food, clothing, shelter, medical care. They should have it. For free, it should be given to them. 
uh, like I said, I always, I'm always told, well, that's not being realistic. But see, for me, it's about having a belief. And well, I mean, we are in control here, right? As beings, we are in control of this world. So why shouldn't I, or why couldn't I believe that? And also for me, you know, what is reality? Do we not create reality? What is it? So if we create it, what can we create? We have to believe that we can create great things, beautiful things. Right? And, and so going back to the acceptance of pain and suffering, and then, you know, it's things of, and they didn't recover in a book, is children, you know. What? I think a little bit covered by innocence, but for me, it didn't get enough in, in depth because, in depth. Because, you know, there are so many children who are suffering. And you can't say that they really wanted that. You know, there are two-year-olds, seven-year-olds dying, suffering. And you can't really say they want it. Or that they had really had a fear of it. You know, they, they're born into it. And so, I don't know. It, that's that's the problem I had, you know, is it's, it's dealing with accepting that children are in there because they want it or the fact that the book didn't really cover that enough for me and so other than that you know it was it was a it's all right book and and going back to children and like I said the thing is about the truth we have to seek the truth the truth shall set us free because this is the thing, if the law of attraction is true, if it is absolutely true that each and every person in this world has full and total control over their world, their experiences, what happens to them, their happiness, then that is something that would need to be taught to our children in school at an early age. Because if it's true, and then everybody knows it, excuse me, and accepts accepts it, then just think where that means that we would go. If everybody was to know and believe it, and everybody was to have the thoughts, the belief and feelings of being totally and completely happy, stress-free, uh, worry-free, then where would this world go to? It would it would go to a heaven on earth, right? If everybody was looking for complete joy. If we all were together moving forward in a one direction of being complete joy and bliss heaven. Then that would mean that we could achieve that. That's my thoughts. God bless. Peace and love.